Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we do our second 2025-26 winter look ahead. Now we did our first update a few weeks ago looking at all of August data for the coming months ahead and today we'll be able to look at all of the September data as that has come out in the past few days. We're updating you on the sort of early season forecast for the polar vortex, that, that big area of cold air high up in the stratosphere that can cause uh, not only very stormy conditions but if it gets disturbed then we could see uh, some blocking conditions if we saw a sudden stratospheric warming or something of that. That sorts. We're also looking at generally the pressure charts, the temperature charts for the coming months ahead. And we'll also have a look at the ENSO later on in the video, uh, as it does look like we are going to be heading into a La Nina as we head into this winter, which could have knock on effects for the UK. It's an always one to one, but generally, a La Nina does encourage and coincide more with a colder wetter winter for the UK, a more amplified jet stream with higher pressure across the North Atlantic. So that's something we'll look at in the second half of the video. So do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now if you start on the mean zonal wind at 10 HPA above the Northern Hemisphere, now this is essentially looking at the speed of the polar vortex high up in the atmosphere. Now again, we've described what the polar vortex is numerous times over the past uh, sort of few years. Uh, so we'll whiz through it quickly for those who've not, uh, sort of not heard of it before. But essentially the polar vortex is that fast ribbon of air high up in the atmosphere between the very cold air that forms right over the pole during the winter months and the warmer air around the mid latitudes. And essentially between that cold air and the warm air, there's a difference in pressure. Lower pressure, where we've got the colder air above the North Pole, warmer air, across the mid latitudes, we've got higher pressure and that causes a very strong westerly flow to develop and that is the polar vortex. Now that propagates throughout the atmosphere, that westerly momentum and is one of the main contributors to a strengthening jet stream during the autumn and winter periods. Now it's no coincidence why we see stormier or wetter conditions throughout the autumn and winter and it's because the jet stream is stronger one of the reasons why it's stronger is because the polar vortex is really powering up. So there is kind of a one-to-one -one correlation there. It doesn't always couple up. We can see disconnects between the jet stream and the polar vortex. But generally speaking, so there's not exact science there, but generally speaking, a weak polar vortex or even a reversal of the polar vortex, i.e. easterly winds high up in the atmosphere, can, can uh, lose strength for the jet stream produce more amplification and sometimes even reverse it complete with easterly winds possible in the most extreme scenario. So we always keep an eye out on what is going on in the polar vortex, whether we see a sudden stress very warming or whether it is just generally very weak. Now, this is the chart for the next six weeks or so. This only goes out to the end of October, but you can see this is the main strengthening period for the polar vortex over the next couple of months. We had the polar vortex forming about two weeks ago, just as we were recording our first winter look ahead. And now we've got it around the five meters per second mark, and it's going to strengthen rapidly as it does every year over the coming weeks and the coming months for it peaks later on in December, around the Christmas period, in fact. So you can see the red line, the thick red line is the mean. That's generally where the polar vortex should be this time of year into the future. And the thinner red lines are the 10th and 90th percentile. So um, generally speaking, the polar vortex, the zonal mean winds should be in around the thicker red line. And majority of the time, they should be within the two red lines, the lighter red lines, the thinner red lines. Outside of that, then we are looking at something quite abnormal. Now you can see over the next week or two, we've actually got a pretty weak polar vortex and that actually continues for much of this forecast period. We're out two, three, four meters per second below the mean for this year. Now that could mean absolutely nothing. We get, could completely correct as we head later on into the autumn, into the early winter, but perhaps could set a precedent for a weaker polar vortex this year. It's something that we do have to take into account. Longer term, it remains around average or below average, definitely above the thinner red line. So we're not looking at anything too ridiculous here. There are some outliers down there, but most of the runs 
are between the two thinner red lines. Um, but we've got a lot of scatter there in that last week or two of October. So that's why a little bit sceptical of making too many conclusions out of that. But at least the next week or two, in sort of early October, maybe in the next three or four weeks, actually, we are generally below that thicker red line, quite close to the thin red line in the next few weeks. Now, this chart's updated daily, so you can go have a look at this yourself. Um, but again, just highlights what's going to be happening over the coming weeks. This is going to be a staple of our winter look heads. It'll be interesting to see every look ahead we do, whether we see any substantial changes in the polar vortex, whether this weakening does continue, or whether we do see a bounce back as we do head further into the autumn and start of winter. Now, one thing I was saying is that the polar vortex has a coupling effect with the jet stream. So when we've got a weaker polar vortex, you'd expect the jet stream to be a little bit weaker. But as we'll illustrate now, that doesn't always completely work out. We've got a slightly weaker than average polar vortex, but we're going to see very strong westerly winds over the coming weeks. As you've probably seen from the daily videos, we're going to see a lot of unsettled, potentially even pretty stormy conditions in the short to medium term. And the long -term, longer term prospects looks pretty similar. So this is the weather regime frequency. This is the same time frame out towards the end of October that shows what's going to happen across the North Atlantic at our sort of weather level out towards um, sort of the 500 HPA level. So we've got here different weather regimes, positive NAO, that is a strong flat jet stream, strong low pressure just to our north, strong high pressure towards the Azores, very strong westerly flow. Red block, that is a Scandinavian block, and that is where we would expect to see easterly winds or high pressure extending over the UK towards Scandinavia, that's a cold pattern. Negative NAO, that's high pressure up towards Greenland, Iceland, potentially northerly winds atr that's an atlantic ridge so that's probably an amplified jet stream not enough to produce anything majorly cold um, but that could be more of a feature uh, especially what we've seen from some of the short range uh, medium range runs as well and then of course gray is kind of no regime a bit of a mix mash where none of these can be individually picked out you can see the prevailing so the idea over the next few weeks is definitely blue. That is a positive NAO, at least the next couple of weeks out towards the end of September. And even for much of October, we got that there. So it is setting up a pretty stormy and unsettled next few weeks and potentially months. So it shows you that the polar vortex is looking pretty weak, but at the surface, we're not seeing any major disturbances. No early season northerly winds or high pressure blocks does look like the westerlies are going to prevail at least for the foreseeable future and again this is a chart that might not be too relevant right now but in about two or three weeks time we'll start to be able to have a look at kind of the second half of november early december uh, and that's when we have real intrigue of potential for colder conditions and generally the winter conditions to start to come in and by the time we get to october and later on in october we'll start to be able to even have a look the sort of run up to Christmas. So this is going to be another staple that we look at over the coming weeks. Maybe not too relevant in these early updates, but definitely will be more important later on. Now, if you look at the bulk of the data that's been updated for today, uh, this is the mean sea level pressure from the East Indo ensembles for the coming months. Now, this is a three monthly look ahead. So this is by no means going to pinpoint what's going to happen day or day or even day or day or even week on week. This is looking October, November and December, the genuine trends that the ensembles are predicting. Now, this is the September base times. This is brand new data that's only come out in the last few days. And you can see red and oranges, that's higher pressure. Blues is lower pressure. And you can see why the ensemble rate, uh, the weather regime a few moments ago had positive NAO. High pressure towards the Azores, low pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, flat westerly winds. Again, it might not be exactly flat, but a strong westerly flow. That is looking pretty damn obvious here for October, November and December. Now, if we look at November, December and January, that signal decreases across Greenland, but strengthens towards Svalbard. Higher pressure still across the Azores. To me, this looks like a potential bit of a transitional period. Stormy maybe early on in this period, but maybe more amplification and more higher pressure taking over towards Greenland. So potentially more of an amplified jet stream, but definitely not pinpointing anything majorly called the last update. You'll have noted there was quite a lot of orange over Greenland. So in August update, there was a lot of blocking here, 
not so much. A little bit of a reversal, perhaps, appearing there. And this is for the bulk of the winter here, December, January and February. Again, lots of yellows towards our south. Some blues towards Iceland and eastern Greenland. Even a little bit of orange and yellow there towards northern Greenland. A little bit of blue towards northern Canada. But generally speaking, it's not particularly clear cut. So what this is telling me, it's a bit of a mishmash. We could see some very cold conditions and some very mild conditions all embedded into this period. And it's kind of come out with this weird sort of mashed together picture with perhaps some hints of blocking, some perhaps hints of a westerly flow. Not really sure. So definitely looks like December, January, February here is not clear cut at all. Could have a whole array of conditions in this sort of 12 week block. And that's why these really are kind of longer term forecast. Uh, again, they're not going to pick up on individual weeks or individual slight colder spells or slight milder, stormier spells. They are looking for more genuine trends. And as I said in the first look ahead, more often than not, these models do pick up on the overall idea. Not necessarily getting them pinpointed, but definitely pick up on the overall idea. Like, for example, last winter, we did see quite a lot of blocking and colder spells early on in the winter through December and early January. Now, it didn't produce widespread snow, busy cold conditions and a historic snow event or cold spell for most areas or even or only for a few areas or anything genuinely cold. But it was, from a weather regime, a pretty cold and blocked period. And the models did pick it up in the longer term. Um, so it does get the weather regime genuinely correct. Uh, it's just, again, those details that we'll pinpoint nearer the time. So a bit of a mix max here, I must say. And then finally, we have a look at the January, February, March period. So heading on to the latter portion of the winter, it's pretty similar. High pressure towards Scandinavia, much of Central Europe. Again, a bit of blues towards Greenland and northern Canada. Again, this would look at a, a bit of a westerly flow. But you see around the UK, it's kind of neutral, not really seeing anything too obvious here. So again, it could be symbolic of a bit of a split. Maybe some Scandinavian high pressure systems being shown here from some ensemble members. Maybe some dipping of the jet stream. We're sitting in a colder trough. That's a possibility. So again, a bit of a mix and match here. Now, to finish by looking at the latest 850 HPA temperatures, before we look at the ENSO, we can see that as we head into the early portion of the winter, October, November, December, you can see lots of reds and oranges. Again, because of the climate period we're looking here, 1992 to 2016, because we uh, the planet has warmed, we can't deny that um, from the looks of these charts. Um, uh, we're always going to be expecting to see a positive anomaly or generally a positive anomaly. Anything that's neutral or a cold anomaly is pretty notable. So here, lots of reds and oranges, nothing too abnormal. You can start to see some more neutral colours appearing towards Greenland, Iceland, northern Canada. Again, this is potentially symbolic of areas of cold air coming out of the tropospheric polar vortex heading towards the our side of the pole and you can see even some blues appearing in the north atlantic for december january february again that could be symbolic of a lot of cold air pooling out of the north atlantic that would most likely support more of a stormier spell an unsettled spell than anything particularly cold for the uk but again subtle shifts where this cold air pools it could push to other areas so definitely the runs today reverse back on that major blocking pattern that we were seeing in August update, but still showing some transitional patterns, a bit of a mix of different scenarios cropping up here. It's not a clear cut westerly wind, definitely some disturbances going on in there, but definitely not as clear cut as blocking patterns were showing, uh, were being shown in the August update. Now, to finish by looking at the ENSO, now this is the uh, forecast for the ENSO area, I'm looking at whether we see a La Nina, El Nino, or a neutral period. You can see over the past few months, it's been neutral, not really any major anomaly going on out there in the Pacific. But you can see the latest forecast has had quite a shift. If we look at the August forecast, it remained neutral to maybe slight La Nina, so slight negative anomaly. You can see the latest has gone for a more pronounced negative anomaly with majority of ensemble members now here showing uh, a moderate La Nina. Not a strong La Nina, 
a fairly moderate to weak La Nina. Anything above about minus one, a one degree anomaly, that's when we are looking at something pretty strong. And you can see for the winter period, December, January, February, looking from minus 0.5 to minus one there. So a weak to moderate La Nina there. If we do have a look down here, you can see what this chart is showing. This is the Nino 3.4. So this is the area of the equatorial Pacific that we are looking at for sea surface temperatures. So a negative anomaly would be colder sea surface temperatures, warmer, which is the La Nino, is looking at warmer sea surface temperature anomalies. And again, it's got a, a knock-on effect for the UK weather. This is the other side of the planet, but it has knock-on effects on thunderstorm activity throughout the equatorial areas, which then inevitably has knock-on effects higher up in the atmospheres. These big, huge cumulonimbus clouds that form from thunderstorms will eventually have impacts on the jet stream and can distort patterns, just like sometimes look at hurricanes and we've talked about this over the past few weeks and we do talk about regularly in autumnal updates um done, uh, big hurricanes can have profound impacts on the jet stream and it's the same kind of process where you got this huge you know nimbus clouds produced with these hurricanes big area of low pressure and it does distort the jet stream the same can be said here with these negative or positive anomalies it has knock-on effects throughout the pacific region and then eventually along to the jet stream but what, if we kind of skip a few steps, what we can say is, generally speaking, La Nina winters generally are colder and are more unsettled. So they would support more of an amplified jet stream, whereas a La, La Nina pattern would be symbolic of a more positive NAO, like what we're seeing over the coming weeks, and perhaps a milder pattern there as we head into the winter. Um, not necessarily wetter, or drier again it depends on where the jet stream sets up but more of a flat very positive nao so that's supportive of potentially something a bit colder there as we head into the coming weeks and months so nothing too insightful today on the latest update but as i said in the first update it's about watching trends we see today that the latest ECMF anomalies don't necessarily agree with what our first update so it'll be interesting to see what october's data has in store and of course, it'll be interesting to see whether this weak to moderate La Nina remains in the forecast over the coming days and weeks. And with a relatively weak polar vortex into the autumn, does that continue throughout the autumn and potentially even into the early portion of the winter? As I said, that could also have knock on effects. It's all these different things that we need to keep a close eye on, which will eventually shape that early to middle portion of the winter and eventually will set the scene for the whole winter period. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.